happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Have you had any cases where you've dealt with some sort of black magic situation which your team found difficult? So there is a case uh, that I encountered quite personally. It's a case we received, of course, because this is, I'm talking 2016. End of 2016, we received a call from this village in Odisha and uh, they wanted to invest, get their uh, village investigated plus a river bed. That river used to go pass through that village. And their claims was um, uh, that uh, the road that connected to village and uh, beside it was the river that was going, uh, passing through. Uh, the, on that road, they were seeing creatures which were not human. They're like headless beings just crawling on the floor, uh, on, on the field and they were on all their fours. They had no head, uh, no tail. So there is no way it's an animal. It was all blackish and gooish kind of a thing. So much fear that... Uh, they stopped uh, communication between the two villages. No trading is happening. They stopped going out at night and everything came to a halt. The only time they used to go out was during the day. By the time it's evening, they know we do not have to go because there were personal experiences of people who were kind of, who said and claimed that they were pushed down the road. So to give you an explanation how the road was, the road was made up of uh, mud. It's a muddy road. And on this side are the paddy fields. And on this side is the river. But before the river starts is a river bed for which you'll have to go down. So it's like if you cannot balance your bike or any vehicle, you're going down to the river directly if you cannot control well. And on that side is the wheat field and all kind of vegetations that is going on. So they're quite worried because there are kids and all who were once playing at that area. Now they can't play and everything. So they called and uh, uh, unfortunately, it was only me who went there. Unfortunate, why? Because my teammates should have experienced what I experienced. And so I went there with a, a couple of few friends and uh, who, who had no knowledge. We just went because it was a village and I needed some help to manage people. And uh, the first thing, like every investigation is we were interviewing this person, uh, every person who had some experience. And then this, then comes this old lady. This old lady and she says, um, I'll say this in Hindi, uh, Beta, ye to shaitan ka ghar hai. You know? And I'm like, yeah, I've heard something like this. As in the, the devil lives here. Yeah, it's so intensely haunted, according to her. And the peop according to her, there are also people who have died because of those accidents. thus making it way more dangerous than apart from the claims that they had. As in whatever beings were there were also killing people. Not killing people, but let's say because of their fear, people took some turns and uh, breaked in a break in a way as in they applied break in a way that they when uh, uh, died in that process i think they met with an accident or this kid so bad that they had go head injuries and all and they all died uh, that way and uh, when this lady said that i was like yeah i have heard this line before because people generally in fear do use these terms to explain their fear and how scared they are i'm like yeah it's all fine but uh, we went there, uh, we were like, okay, it's done, the interview is done. A lot of people have a lot of claims and a lot of stories. I said, let's go and investigate this place. And uh, this is like 400, 500 kilometers from Bhubaneswar. So I have to come back home, then attend college the next day. <laughs> so uh, I was like, no, let's wrap it up as soon as possible. And this is 6.30, uh, 6.30 to 7-ish. The sun has just set. And uh, in, in Odisha, the sun sets quite early as compared to Bombay. And it's like by 5.36, it's quite dark. And uh, I'm like, yeah, it's all fine. Uh, we are done with the interview. Let's go to the place. And uh, we, sorry. And we will uh, start our investigation. Now, while on the way, I realized that Pooja had called me while I was on my way to the investigation. And she just happened to warn me that Sarbajit, you might face uh, some kind of a witchy entity or something related to witchcraft. Just... Just be warned and be safe. And it's not a very good kind of. But I'm like, no, the place I... So this is a conversation we had before I reached the place. I'm like, no, but the place I'm going to has no history of witchcraft. And no claims of witchcraft. So um, maybe it's something else that is happening in the future. Maybe it's one of your premonitions. She was like, no, I'm quite sure this is this one. I'm like, okay, I'll see. And then I ignored it. And uh, we went there and the, it's, it's it's a huge place like football field. And it was uh, around winterish, uh, not winter, it was summer, I think. And so the water was not over flooded. It was not out of the quantity. It was quite good. So the riverbeds were quite visible. And we went there, it's seven, eight-ish. And uh, my friends, it's like 
I was there, then there were three people, one with a camera, two camera guys and one sound guy. And uh, of course, we have to record everything and we were doing all those things. So I said, let's do one thing. Let's uh, separate. Two people will go one side, the other two will go the other side and we can meet up after uh, half an hour and let's see what you are catching, what you are feeling and I'll see what I'm getting on my devices. So the first 15-20 minutes, there is no replies, there's nothing, the gadgets are all dormant and I thought, you know, maybe it's a good sign. This is not haunted. We will counsel the entire village. We'll make them believe or aware that, you know, it is not haunted and maybe there are few stories which are rounding up, but there's nothing else to fear. And we were like all fine and uh, suddenly starts raining. And I was like, how did it rain? It was not raining. There's no predictions or uh, anything like that. So we rushed down to the car. We waited for five minutes and after five minutes, it was done. And, you know, I said that we I was quite happy and excited that I'm going to wrap it up quite soon because there's nothing. This time when I went down again, the feelings had changed. The vibes had changed. And I'm like, why does this feel so dense right now? It's an open field. There is no one apart from the four of us, but it feels like there are thousands of people surrounding me and they're kind of staring at me and looking at me and my crew and everything. I said, why does it feel so dense? I was like, anyway, let's do our job and uh, we will then get back. So again, we are separated. And this time when I get my device out, it's now starts blinking. The One of the EMF sensors, it starts blinking. And I'm now questioning thing, how is it possible? Because it's a riverbed, it's a village. Uh, where the electricity is also like a dream, like a regular electricity. So there are no overhead wires. There's no wires underground. There's nothing. And the, if there is a wire underground, then the moment I would have taken the device near the ground, it would have spiked more. There was nothing. It was only doing that area where I was standing. And as I was trying to understand why this is happening, the two other guys who went the opposite direction, one of them starts shouting, Sarbaji, 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 and it's kind of rushing towards me. My first reaction, there's a crocodile or a snake that he encountered because a riverbed and there are counts of crocs out there. And I am also running towards him uh, to understand what happened. And he says, Sarbajit, I saw this uh, 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 entity standing behind you. I'm like, you're bluffing right now. There's no entity because even in the last podcast, I said, I'm, I'm my peripherals are quite strong and evident. I can always be aware what is happening. I'm like, I didn't see anything in my peripherals. And you're pointing exactly where I can have a look. He said, no, I'm very sure there was someone and it was white in color. And it was, it, it was a lady, old lady. And she was looking right at you very angrily. I'm like, are you sure? I like, yeah, I'm very sure. Do you think I'll fake and all? Like, of course not. Now I, the, so I said, okay, let's do one thing. You pinpoint exactly where you saw. So as he's coming closer to the point, he says, Sarbojit, you know what is happening? I can't see this place right now. It's very blurry. I can see this area, I can see this area, it's quite clear, crystal clear, but uh, mm -hmm. this area uh, was very blurry to me. Yes. So I'm like, are you sure you're not in a panic attack right now because you saw something uh, which may not be true at all and you are going into that fear moment. And he said, no, no, I'm very sure. I said, let's do one thing now. Let's replicate the entire thing. I'll stand exactly as I was standing. You go back to the point where you were and maybe if the entity is actually looking at me, angry at me, it will maybe manifest again and maybe this time I'll make sure that I'm looking that side and nothing manifested and I was like, see, I was telling, you know, there's nothing. He's like, no, but I saw. So as we are standing, the camera guy is asked, okay, please go take some B-rolls and all because we have to establish the place. And this guy is 40 years old, 30, he's right now 39, I think. And uh, uh, he went to one spot and we three are sitting and uh, we are chatting, you know, what to do episodic wise because we do not have much content. It's just what the running and all happened, but we can't show anything because we're not getting anything. We're not establishing anything. As that is happening, this guy starts running towards me, Sarbajit, Sarbajit. And before it was Sarbajit, Sarbajit, it was Mummy, Mummy, Sarbajit, help. So when I, I keep on saying that, when a 35 years old man starts shouting, Mummy, Mummy, you know, there is something wrong. And as he's running towards me, we all three of us, we kind of take five, six steps back because we are like, what the hell just happened? Why is he running? And we have seen entities can influence your emotional state. You know, if you are not in your highest state of um, emotional being, they will, they can poke you, they can make you overwhelmed and you might take some reaction, do some reactions, which can be scary for other people. I thought it's something like that. And the fear that has been created by this guy who said that he saw something. He said that someone tapped on his shoulder. I said, no, there's a, there are so many trees, no? One of the trees might have hit you. 
there's no way there is a uh, any spirit he was like but no there not a single tree where i was shooting i said take me to that spot he takes me to the spot and there is not a single tree i'm like how can this happen and as i'm talking and i'm trying to understand what is happening this one of the sound guys uh he said that sarbajit i think i have found something here and i think it's a cloth that is wrapped uh which is looking red because there is blood in it and inside it there is something and my first reaction was do not touch it get a stick or something but don't touch it directly and uh, he was like yeah but see you know what there is so as i'm going to that spot i realized at the same spot where so this guy where he was pointing me that he got tapped he was pointing like that okay this is the area you know it is the same area where this guy also saw the entity and for some reason out of the entire 45 minutes drama that was happening out there i never investigated that area i never went there so now when this guy is calling me sir please check what is inside i take one step you won't believe ranveer i think after this 2016 so this is like 4 years into my investigation journey after investigating some of the most haunted locations in india for the first time i started questioning everything that i have been doing like why am i doing this like all my fears which i overcame as a kid back in 2013 the fear of paranormal darkness and darkness and everything and they all overpowered me i was overwhelmed with negativity i sat down and that's when it clicked me pooja did warn me that you are going to encounter something that's related to witchcraft why because when this guy unfolds unwraps a cloth there is a voodoo doll inside it and there is another marking inside out there you know which a was symbol a symbol i'll explain what that is and uh, i was like dude but and i kind of no option so the ground was all wet but i sat down seeing that my crew is all he is like dude if sarbajit is behaving like this what will we do right now because we are also experiencing things right now and i'm sitting there i'm questioning everything i'm like this is the very reason why i started investigation why am i being shown that dark side again why all those things which i thought i have healed already why are they coming back now and i'm sitting there i'm like no i cannot let this overpower me i have to do something i have to do something i grounded myself sitting right there i just visualized i did this short uh, visualization meditation golden light and white light i grounded myself i shielded myself i got up and i kind of charged inside that area just shouting like you know what the do you think of yourself do you think you can scare me you can scare my crew you want to do something do it right in front of me you want to manifest manifest right now i'm here i'm in your area right now you want to do something right do right now and as i'm doing that i'm i'm, I'm still having goosebumps because that was some moment for me and for the crew as well and uh, when we were figuring out we found out that there is a symbol like i mentioned and i said you know let's do one thing let's wrap up i think it's done we don't have to complete this case and uh, they all were like yeah yeah please let's do that and i'm like yeah, let's wrap up because things are going in a very dark way which i know my crew is not prepared for it and i need my team members for it i said let's wrap up and as we are wrapping up run we won't believe we were seeing few things which were quite i don't know my engineering mind cannot explain that we were seeing pebbles falling now of course the pebbles can be thrown towards us but if it is thrown towards you it will have a projectile motion and then it will you know it will be parallel to the ground and it will come down because of gravity this is happening it's like it's falling right from the sky there are pebbles falling everywhere and we all four of us are seeing that that pebbles are falling and we are like dude we have to dodge these and we have to go get into the car we dodge them you know pebbles falling this is like like how can this happen this is totally there is no scientific base if you ask me as a paranormal investigator sarbajit what is how could this happen i don't know i don't have any answer but we uh, went back home uh, we did uh, we we all took uh, i i didn't take i only meditated before uh, sleeping but all the crew they uh, took salt water bath and even after taking a salt water bath they they all three of them had the same dream that they are being chased by that entity which they saw like one of the man uh, one of the crew saw out there they are like being changed uh, changed by that entity and the next day i was shown i again i was researching on that symbol that we found 
and uh, we have few associates all over the world and uh, we sent a few friends uh, who are based in australia that you know if they know any symbol because i also tried to study symbols but it was something that i was not able to recognize and this friend in australia who is quite good and he said dude even i don't know what this is uh, you know maybe you can f- ask someone from the salem area in us or from from the europe because they have quite some knowledge on this so i sent someone from the usa even that fa- friend i had no idea then i friend uh, sent to it to a friend who is based in uk he's a physicist and but researches on the paranormal he has a vast knowledge of symbols podcast sorry go on go on <laughs> and uh, we sent him that and uh, he said dude how did you find this i like we are investigating some rural areas of uh, odisha and uh, and we found this but he was like but how is it possible a rural area like that has a symbol so powerful i'm like but what is that he said it's a symbol that was used by which is still used by some of the most powerful witches in the world to summon the male and female version of a demon like every entity has two versions we all have our masculine and feminine side same way for demons as well so it's a symbol that is used to summon the male and female version of that masculine and f- uh, feminine version of that and to harm someone now that particular village ranveer uh, of course there is no connection but somewhere the conspiracy mind uh, that I, or the curiosity mind that i have that place has been hit by the super cyclone in 1999 that happened in odisha it was so bad that particular village that dead bodies were floating from a village 25 kilometers away from this village and this village's uh, dead bodies were found 30 40 kilometers away the dead bodies floating like boats it was so bad out there and the place has seen some of the most natural calamities out there someone did question me in one of the meetups do you think it was the voodoo doll or the black magic or the dark magic that was bringing all those natural calamities if you ask me that same question i do not have an answer for that <laughs> this is one experience that i had so that case was left unsolved yes it's a case that is still very much open and i still i, I really want to go back and uh, close that one why because you know we of course we got back to the villagers and we asked the village people we kind of meditation is not their daily thing they have no idea about meditation of course they have a lot of faith in their gods so what we did was we kind of helped them help uh, them uh with their faith only to get over the fear so that they do not take any reaction or do anything that will harm them more so that way the villagers never complained about it but somewhere in me that thing challenged me so it's not an ego thing but i know i want to see what if it challenges me again what if it pokes in things because if there are things still inside me i need to heal them i need to cure them i need to overpower them because until i do that if not that entity there will be some other entity who might find that loophole and might poke again of course after that uh, place i have been to other places which are way more creepy i have sp- faced entities which are way more dangerous than that but no one did a damage or or found that loophole like that entity did while you're speaking about this my stomach is hurting yeah it's it's, it's it was a bad place it is a bad place why is my stomach hurting it's because i got you so much connected to that place that's why really yeah so if witchcraft was actually responsible you someone in that village was probably doing yeah little movie plot line that yeah, it old is. auntie who told you beta yes. ya shaitan what if yes. she was only the <laughs> <laughs> and i underestimated her i'm like yeah i've heard this before but you know so deep down now that i'm sharing this deep down i knew that what she said it's going to come back to me again and it actually shook me it shook me to the core i think pose that also again i took a break from investigation i'm like no i have to channel myself i have to uh, kind of increase that damage as in cure that damage that the entity did to me but i really want to go back very very honest truth i want to go back and get it sorted yeah so if you enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more